Welcome to Tech Brothers with Amir. In this video, we are going to learn how to alter columns or generate alter scripts by using a graphical user interface in SQL Server. So think about a scenario where you are working as a developer and you need to create some alter script, maybe change the name of the column or add a new column or drop a column from existing uh, table. So open the SSMS and connect to the SQL Server instance. Once you are connected, go to the database where your table does exist. So in my case, it is your DB name. Go to tables and I have a customer sale table. Let's expand that and take a look. We have first name and the rest of the columns are there. In the first name, I would like to make a modification. Instead of worker 10, I would like to have worker 30 because I'm getting some customer and their first name is more than 10 characters or alphabets. So I, I one change, I want to do that. Second, I don't need the street address. So I want to remove this column. Third, I want to uh, maybe change the uh, column name from country to country name. So what you need to do, click on the table, right click and click select design. It will open the definition of the table in a design and you can start making changes. Remember one thing we would like to do, we want to do uh, instead of watcher 10, we would like to do watcher 30. So once I do that, click on the side and then we see that it is happening and then we can hit save if we want to save or we can click here and say generate change script. So let's save it and see. Once we hit save, what happened? Saving changes is not permitted. The change you have made require the following table to be dropped and recreated. You have either made changes to, the, to a table that cannot be recreated or enable the option prevent saving changes that require the table to be recreated. Okay, so there is an option that is uh, we have uh, to enable it uh, or maybe we have to disable it. So it is a uh, uh, we have to take a look. Just hit cancel. Okay, go to the tools and go to the options. Under the, under the designer here, once you click there, we have a checkbox that says prevent saving changes that require table recreation. So. Uh, we don't want to make uh, any change uh, that uh, drop the table and recreate it. So this option uh, really help us. So uh, if we are feeling okay, we are totally fine with the drop and recreate, we can uh, just remove this part and hit okay. Now if I come back and hit save, it is going to save the changes. So now let's go to the table, refresh, go to columns and we see that the change is made but you don't really want to do it. Uh, I showed you how to do it, but in cases, uh, let's say, if the, there is a big table that has uh, maybe 50 million records uh, and uh, uh, you will uh, remove that prevention, uh, it will drop and recreate, it might take a whole lot of time to do that. Uh, so you don't want to do it. Maybe you want to take alternate uh, route and uh, write your script by yourself. Um, anyways, let's go back uh, and we say, go to options, go to designer, and uh, we are going to select this part again. Hit okay. Now, if I would like to change to the watcher 50, I click the worker 50 and I'm going to click here and say generate change script. So again, to generate the scripts even, we have to have that option of prevent option enabled, uh, sorry, disabled. So I'm gonna go to the tools again, options, designer, remove this part, prevent saving changes that require recreation, hit okay. Now I'm not making changes here, so I'm just creating the script. So generate script, and you see that the script is generated. I can press, uh, just copy all the way, copy, and no, I don't want to make uh, or save any changes. So I just copy the script, take a look how SQL Server is making this uh, change. If I come back and uh, see, I have made the change here 50, but I have not saved or I have not executed. So uh, if I will uh, refresh, you see that uh, watcher uh, 30 is uh, the data length for the first name column. So uh, that's just uh, that's fine. We can we will come back and review this code. So what it is doing here, it is creating a timetable first, and then uh, the second part is it is inserting all the record from existing uh, uh, table into the timetable. Once uh, that's done. 
and uh, while it uh, uh, created this temp table you see that the data type it uses walker 50 so it uh, create that table get, get all the data from the current table and finally drop the current table so it will drop this table and rename uh, this temp table that has uh, this is a not really a temp table but it, it started with the temp so this is a actual table so this is a part of a name will be removed but rest of rest will be left with the, the actual table name so it is doing this whole operation where it create a table insert everything from the current table and then finally drop the current table and rename the newly created table to the uh, our uh, table whatever we started as uh, we, we started uh, to make modification I don't really recommend this way by going this one if you have millions of records uh, it's not gonna be uh, easy just to you are renaming a data type you can uh, uh, probably use the alter statement in that case probably it will be better uh, uh, we, I have done a video where so you say alter uh, table let's say you would say alter table and table name and then you say alter column and first name to the watcher 50 so instead of uh, this whole thing uh, um, creating a table putting all the records there and then uh, uh, dropping the uh, uh, actual ra uh, table and then renaming uh, that uh, newly created table to the our table why not use this statement but i showed you what exactly it does create when we are trying to uh, change the data type for ex existing column in the table by using graphical user interface now uh, let's uh, close this one again come back here let's take a look on the columns fine um, we can use this statement if we like okay it altered take a look it did next uh, we will go to the graphical user interface again and uh, I'm going to drop a column so you click here and say let's say delete column so once uh, you delete it you can uh, click here generate change script this script can be used uh, for the QA or uh, UAT or production deployment so so you see that it is generating alter table table name and drop column and column name so you can uh, just copy that and uh, give to your uh, DBA and he will run in QA and UAT in production and it will drop the column so I'm gonna hit no and uh, we can come back to the query paste it here as you see now let's see we have a street address uh, columns still there because we did not save the changes up so let's uh, run this one and it is going to drop uh, the column now you see that street address is a gone another part I was talking about renaming a column so let's say country to country name so in that case let's go back and here we have a name and if I will generate the script see here it is using SP rename so it is telling okay it is DBO that's a schema then we have customer name let's copy this one and at least we see that copy no and we can go to new query paste it and here is the statement um, so we see that uh, dbo customer sale dot country and uh, it is in uh, make it uh, um, first uh, temp underscore country underscore uh, two that's the name you have to give it then further taken next step taken that column and rename it to this one i can directly actually use uh, this to rename I don't have to first uh, rename this uh, country to the temp uh, country uh, country name and underscore two and then uh, further do this one so uh, I can simply put in one step but uh, this is how SQL uh, does create the statement for renaming so in my case if I would like to say let's run this one first so it completed so you can see that we have country name now from here if I would like to say country name to country again I don't have to follow two rename steps here I can simply say country so SP underscore rename is gonna take care even in the single step you don't have to first uh, uh, put to the temp name and then run to the next one so you can do that 
Chorles. See, if I want to show you what this uh, statement was doing, so let me run this uh, and uh, see the country name here. So we have country. If I run the first one, uh, that's equals originated. So you see here, this is the name it uh, created. First, it renamed the country to this name, and then uh, it is going to rename this name to the country name. So see, the second statement is going to work. So it uh, it is doing in two statements uh, that we can do in one statement. Now you see that it is changed to the country name. So uh, your choice, uh, th this is not going to take a whole lot or even you run directly, fine, but this is how the SQL server will uh, generate the statements for you. Let's cancel this out. Now we can go and add a new column. I'm going to call this one my, uh, let's say age, and I will say, this is going to be tiny int because nobody is going to live more than 255 years and for tiny int we can save the value between 0 to 255 I can click here generate change script and you see that uh, rename to this but can no longer exist okay this this is not I want first let me close this come back here actually I I should have refresh go to design one more time and now let's add a column called age and see what happened now. And now generate scripts and you see that uh, alter table, we have a uh, alter table, DBO and uh, customer sale. And then we have add a column uh, that's age and tiny int and now. So that's what it is doing. So you can take the statement by yourself uh, from here and uh, cancel this out, go to new query and run it. Uh, so once you run it, it will add a new column called age. So you see that age column is added. So uh, it is just one uh, extra option for you because uh, you, if you are not interested uh, uh, or want to learn like uh, how SQL Server is going to generate alter scripts for adding a column, drop in a column, change in the data type. Uh, so all those different things that uh, you can take a look uh, from the designer. So go to the right click on the table and then go to design and make a changes and generate script by using the generate change script uh, button. Uh, it's good to learn, but uh, once you will get used to the things that uh, you don't need uh, to come back here every time uh, because uh, you, you will uh, figure it out always alter statement for your adding column, dropping column or changing the, the name by using SP underscore rename. So thanks very much for watching this video and I hope you learn uh, some good stuff from here. And I will see you guys in the next video.